Amazing Women. I'm Angela Court. We're glad you're joining us. This is a program that comes and brings you the stories of amazing women from right here in our community. And today I am delighted to have a dear friend and a wonderful woman of God who actually hosts her own television program out of Clearwater, Florida, seen all over the country on CTN. Please welcome from Home Keepers, Ms. Arthleen Riffey. Oh, it's good to be with you. And I should my thank darling. you for coming over to be on my show a lot. And uh, before we get into... Uh, you know, whatever the Lord is leading. I want to commend you for amazing women and especially uh, where you're reaching out to the teenagers. Right. Teenage girls really, they really need to be plugged into something like that. And I, I commend you for that sincerely. Thank you. She's actually speaking <coughs> of, uh, there's two so sides of the coin for this mm -hmm. amazing women that you're watching today. There's the television program. Mm -hmm. And then also we have a monthly meeting that's held in the Altamont Springs, Florida area. We have a live band, a testimony, teachings, door prizes, vendors, breakfast, birthday cake, mm -hmm. prayer, uh, laughter, fun, amazing ministry, salvations, healing. <coughs> and all of you women are invited. And if you're interested in coming, just go to the Super Channel site, superchannel.com, and click on the Amazing Women banner and uh, find out about our upcoming meeting we meet once a month. And what we do, Ms. Arthelene, is just two months ago, we began to see the teen girls coming, but we could tell mm -hmm. they wanted something separate. So we have a pair of sisters who are teaching the teens. Fabulous sisters, love God. They are like little fashion statements. They look like little models. So mm -hmm. the girls all love their cool jewelry. And I have seen them, you're right. They Aren't they terrific? And so <clears throat> grounded in the word and they love young people and have a heart for young people. So after praise and worship at our monthly meeting, we excuse the teen girls, they go next door to a room and have a meeting. So we do have a heart for teens, but we also have a heart for moms and grandmoms and aunts. And if I were the sisters. mother of a teen or teenager, teenage girl around here, I would require her to go. Okay, they, well, we're going to put that. you the mother in charge okay. then. <laughs> I'd be glad to. Okay. <laughs> Arthur, <clears throat> tell, so many of our friends <clears throat> and our viewers know of your ministry. I mean, you're a, a, just a Bible teacher, a television host, a pastor, pastor's wife, just so many things, a, a musician, a singer, but you have not had, and today you look beautiful, you look radiant, mother of many great grandchildren, mm -hmm. if I may say a very young, 77 years in age, but the 77 years haven't all been peaches and roses, have they, or is that the life of God? Well, the life you know, of, I of think, um, I think it's probably maybe my life looks like a Sunday school picnic next to someone else's. Uh, you don't get out of here without some uh, real problems, and, and, and the Lord knows how you're going to respond. These tests are to see how we respond. Right. Um, because uh, he knows the beginning from the end. And so I thank God that uh, I was born into a minister's home. It was very, very solid. You know, I had good Bible training mm -hmm. and it's, uh, that's where it's important to uh, train up a child in the way they should go. But also um, your word I've hidden in my heart. Right. And you have to do that rather, rather young. I, I had a friend who uh, during summer vacation she always made her children learn one bible verse a day all the way well you know at the end of three months they've learned quite a bit and that's not that's not asking too much because they're on vacation anyway and they're playing and they're not studying and so uh, to get that word in there because there's a time when you're going to have to reach down and use it right. and uh, so I, I went to bible school and i married a evangelist who uh, I would say a natural born preacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he could take a text out of the telephone book and thrill you. You know, he just had that great gift of contemporary, spe uh, contemporary speaking. And um, so we traveled in evangelism, which hones your gifts. When you preach every night, right. you're a better preacher. And when you sing every night, you're, you're a better singer. And I, uh, that was a day when maybe a church revival, local church revival could last. Uh, the longest one we had was eight weeks. Wow. But two weeks was normal. Right. And a lot of ours were four weeks. So um, that really, you know, uh, keeps you sharp. And I think it's a little bit sad that I don't think there's very many young ministers who have that privilege today because churches don't have those kind of uh, revival services anymore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we always, 
had a desire to build a church. We were very good team, really. And uh, we were with the Assemblies of God. And in that day, there weren't a lot of big churches. Maybe ours was one of the first. What bigger what, ones? 1970s? Um, 1980s? Well, we actually moved to St. Petersburg, Florida, took First Assembly of God Church, had about 140 people. And uh, that was 1967. Oh, so my we, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Were you forming eyelids then, um, maybe? There's two. <laughs> So that's awesome. Yeah, and um, so you know, we we got busy. The church was in financial problems and all that. Never ever bothered my husband. He he was always you know looking up, and it started to grow. And uh, we had to build a bigger building, and we founded a school which still flourishes. In fact, I'll be speaking for the dedication of one of their new buildings uh, in a few days. What's the name of the school? Saint Petersburg Christian School in Saint Petersburg, Florida, and. Uh, it's just so gratifying because in this economy, a lot of Christian schools have had to close. Right. And uh, this one flourishes. To tell you what kind of a visionary he was, he woke me up about three in the morning on a Monday morning in June. And he said, uh, I'm going to start a school and we're going to open in August. And I said, go back to bed. You're crazy. <laughs> and he didn't go back to bed. He paced back and forth, you know, living room, dining room and all, and formulating these. Uh, long story short, we built a building. We had a, a new sanctuary coming up. We made classrooms out of the old building, all in about 12 weeks time. And, and we did open. And it's, it's still going today. So um, uh, that was from the Lord. I probably should have been more supportive. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, in the middle of that blessing, um, my husband took a path of disobedience. Governor Ruben Askew dedicated our church. It was mm. just... And you had a large choir. How many people were in your choir? I had about 200 in my music department. Oh my goodness. So... Um, Harpist, strings, I mean, we're talking a gorgeous... Well, I wanted a harp in the church. Right. So I had to raise one. <laughs> Your daughter plays. My daughter's hard. a. Yeah, that's why. You know, I'd like to talk to Victor because I love the I love the strings and and Victor played on my program once I think. Yeah, my brother Victor, yeah. who you violinist. can't see today, he's a violinist and he's actually the director of this program. So hello, Victor. Mm -hmm. In the back, he's pushing all the buttons and making it happen. And uh, we usually talk about gigs and <clears throat> right. you know performances. Um, we did our. Easter and Christmas programs at the Civic Auditorium and thousands came and you know it was like we had this dream and the dream was on schedule it was coming true and uh, too rapidly probably but in looking back but uh, he chose a path of disobedience and we lost all of it what was his disobedience uh, he was unfaithful mm. and I I've often looked at that scripture, First or Second Corinthians, talking about the judgment seat of Christ, right. when <clears throat> you can suffer loss there. Now, a lot of people think, you know, when you go to heaven, it's all over. You know, no, there's going to be a judgment, and uh, that you can actually suffer loss. And that word means a lot to me, because I know what it is to suffer loss right. of uh, so many things because Satan will take everything he can. Yeah. Um, it was Ben Hayden, do you remember him? Yes, of course. A wonderful, wonderful preacher. I could listen to him all day. Uh -huh. um, but he said something that always stuck with me and that uh, all you out there should remember, you know, if you're thinking about going away from what you know is right according to scripture. He said, Satan will tease you with pictures that will never develop. Mm. And I have met those people across where Satan fooled them, you know, and he held something up and it... Deception is real. Yeah, and it created the loss. It created a loss that you feel in your gut. And you lived it out. His decision mm -hmm. affected Fe you yeah. and your children. And the church people and the city. And, right. it, you know, this, this ripple effect. Right. And... Um, so 
the Lord was good to me. I uh, was given a job in another church in St. Peter's, Minister of Music, wonderful central Christian church there, and um, I could never thank them enough. They took me and the children, they healed us, they loved us, and all. And then in, the, in that intervening time, my husband uh, took his life, and my children were 15 and 18, and um, it was rough, but you know, the Lord can keep you through anything, anything. I mean, fiery furnace, uh, you name it. And all I can say is my children never, never turned away from the Lord and what they were taught. And they married the right people. I think that's so big. Right. <laughs> uh, and uh, they're raising their children. And their children are raising my great-grandchildren to love and serve the Lord. You know, I've got seven great-grandchildren. There's all these little people, you know, <laughs> when you get together. And uh, they remind their parents, you know, they're going to pray at night, and, and they talk about Jesus. And, and his faithfulness is beyond my ability to explain it. So let me ask you, your children made it through not only the breakup of their parents' marriage, their father taking his own life. The loss, yeah. Severe loss, discredit in the city because he was a well-known person mm -hmm. and a man of the cloth and religious and considered all those things. He was human, he made a bad mistake and then even made a, a harder decision taking his life. You're the one who's left. You're a single parent. You have these children to mm -hmm. raise. Arthelene, what did you do that helped your children find their grounding and make make good decisions going forward when their whole world changed? Well, you know, the truth is I have to give my husband a lot of credit. He was a wonderful dad, and he was a Christian dad. Right. And so that foundation you put in them, you can't change that. Whatever the foundation is, it's there. And they had a very, very good foundation, and they loved their dad, and they, they continued to love and honor him. And that is best for them. Now, talk about the city, because we were uh, visible in the city. Um, I think it was five years later, the church that we had built asked me to come back hmm. and be the minister of music. And I felt like uh, you can't do that. You just can't go back home. And so one Sunday, I left Central Christian Church early because I, I was living across the street from the church we built. I know that the audience is just just yeah. enjoying all this minutia. No, but, no, let me just tell mm -hmm. you, I have a dear friend, she was raised in California, raised by a single mom, never knew that the gentleman across their home was her natural father. So let me tell you something, for you, yeah. life happened in the church walls, uh -huh. but there's just people watching, yeah. and they're going through life, and it seems to be on schedule, and all of a sudden, someone in their world pulls a, a decision, and everything mm -hmm. shifts. And, and we're here today to tell the story that God's going to keep you in all that, right? Yeah, it's no different for Christians. Right. The rain falls on the just and the unjust, right. for sure. But one little interesting caveat was after I'd been at the Christian church for five years and, and our church uh, asked me to come back, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, I lived across the street from it. And I'd go back, uh, I had to deliver Meredith's harp on a Sunday morning, so we had two services at Central Christian. I said, well, I'll leave after I direct the anthem, go home, and I'll find somebody in the parking lot of Sun Coast Cathedral to help me okay. get to <laughs> load that harp. And, and church wasn't out yet, so I went in, walked up. It's very hard for me to really go in the church. But Absolutely. I and I stood up at the top of the balcony, and there's a, a big choir loft and not one person in it. Mm. And the Lord spoke to me right there and said, that's your fault because he wanted me to go back. And I said, you can't, you can't go back home. I, and there's a poem like that somewhere, isn't it, that you can't go back. And so, uh, long story short, I agreed to come back when I did rebuild the uh, building, uh, the music program. But the, I think the, the impact was, there was a lot of negative stories in the newspaper when we were going through all this. Uh, pictures, you know, headlines. But when I went back, they put a huge article in one of victory, one of restoration, one of healing and all. And so I, th I think the Lord keeping me there really gave an illustration far beyond the Christian world. To right. uh, And it spoke to you that his 
decision did not change the call of God on your life. Mm -hmm. His, listen to me, baby, mm -hmm. his mistake did mm -hmm. not negate your calling. Because I know a lot yeah. of women, if they're not careful, they get so lost either in their children or their spouse that when something goes wrong, mm -hmm. they feel like, well, they've lost and I I've lost. And there's a yeah. loss, but we've got to not allow others' mistakes or even our own mistakes to think that God's going to come back and somehow detangle us and unwire us and take our giftings out. Maybe the opportunities mm -hmm. change, but the gifting is never removed and we cannot give up. Women, please don't let your identity so be in others that when they slip and fall, you lose all footing. We are to put our feet on the rock of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And the Bible says Jesus is going to build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And when we're going through the valley, if we will stay connected to Christ. Stay, stay, stay connected. Get down there and weep before the Lord. Pour out your pain before the God who knows you and stay connected. You watch. The Lord will bring a gifting. I've heard a calling is almost like an orbit. It just keeps orbiting around until we get right on track. Yeah, because I had no intention of staying in the ministry. I didn't have, think of I course. had oh my goodness. anything that would stand alone. And then <laughs> truth is, when this church invited me, uh, it paid more than a secretary, so I took it. Uh, yeah. And it was an unbelievable, unbelievable blessing. And at that point, I told the Lord, any door you open, I'll walk through it. And I've spoken for every brown bag, senior citizens thing, you know, in uh, Pinellas County <laughs> until I went on the road uh, for 20 years. I was on the road as a speaker. See, but. your gifting is so precious before God, your calling, mm -hmm. your place, your teaching ministry. And you know what? Your husband's legacy, even though he slipped, he's still so it's precious. Strong in God's sight and it's it's happening still in his children because he did raise them in the right way. But Arthur, you traveled the world without him in an era yeah. when women were raised that you just come under oh, that's right. and you have no voice of your own, you're just an echo. Our generations are a lot different. Yeah, yeah. but you know what? The Bible is not different and no. it really says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break and then I want us to come okay. back. I want you to keep sharing your story and I love your transparency. You're so real. And you, you inspire me to just never give up. But I can't Good. be the only woman that's ever walked through the fire. It's got to be others. And God's speaking to us today. The Lord is speaking through our precious friend. He says, he says in Timothy, let the older women teach the younger women. That's well, right. I am sitting at her feet and I am learning and just being so encouraged that she's not giving up and I'm not giving up and you're not going to give up. Stay with us. We're going to come back for so much more. And then we're going to pray for you. So yes. believe mm. for great things in your life. We'll be right back. Is Michael back in school? Our guest today is Arthleen Rippey. She is here from uh, the... St. Petersburg, Tampa area, a minister and a speaker. If you are interested in bringing her to your church, your women's meeting, your conference, I tell you, because of what she's walked through, I'd have her come speak to your men's meeting, guys. I would. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, because she, she'll be very inspirational and, and uh, talk straight from the heart. And you can contact her on her website, rippy.org, www.rippy.org, and just contact her. She also has CDs of her music. She has CDs of her daughter's beautiful music, Playing the Harp. And you can watch her on CTN all around the country on her television program, Homekeepers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, and Angela's been a guest on Homekeepers several times. So Yeah, it's good to come Appreciate over. And it. she always cooks something uh, mm -hmm. on your program, right? That's kind of one of your the special things about your well, program. Well, I, have, you a, I have a gal, you know, we cook together, and that's the audience favorite thing. They love that. And well, you know, I neither gotta, of us are professional, so that they can relate. Well, I'm a professional eater, so I love it, <laughs> and I think it's terrific. Arthur, we've been talking about kind of coming out of the shadows of disappointment, mm. of loss, I mean, coming out of the shadow of other people's identity when life changes, mm -hmm. realizing that just like our salvation, God's gifted and called everybody, and we're going to stand as an individual before Him. How do women, when they're watching today mm -hmm. and they're like, I don't, I just don't know if I can, I can live without him, or I don't know if I can live without my children, or I don't know if I can live without the money I used to make. What do you tell them? Well, <clears throat> I think a lot of it depends on how you were raised. 
um, my grandparents were immigrants and my parents and and I knew what it was uh, you know besides the spiritual callings and all that when life dishes it to you you've got to make up your mind you're going to stand up you're going to work I plan to be a secretary until this other church called me because I had to work right. you know and, and so I always tell women bloom where you're planted mm -hmm. that um, if you're not teaching a Sunday school class in your own church you're probably not going to have a Joyce Meyer ministry you know in the next 10 years right. and uh, so I, th I think the Lord intends us to be ready proactive for for absolutely anything and it's not just that it's it's the things you can be knocked down uh, you know with near tragedies with your children like uh, my son needed a kidney mm. a few years ago right and so I wanted to, I wanted to give him the kidney and we didn't match and my daughter didn't match him and amazingly his wife matched him and we had to both watch both the parents rolled into surgery you know with three teenagers out on the outside and and that that was pretty rough and then both of my children had cancer oh my goodness and so uh, the wisest thing you can do is to really know that god's going to get you through it when i was sitting on a, in the waiting room at the hospital when they said my daughter had cancer and I let out a whale that probably went into outer space, you know. And uh, when you get all that out, then you realize that God is in control. He'd spoken to her, he'd spoken to her husband, uh, gets it through it. And I think of that song that George Beverly Shea used to sing. Maybe it's because uh, the age I'm in right now. And that was, Jesus led me all the way, led me step by step each day. I will tell the saints and angels when I lay my burden down that Jesus led me all the way. This is the time in life where it really pays off. Mm. Just trust me on that. That uh, you haven't lived perfectly and you haven't followed that leading right. as well as you wish you had. Mm -hmm. But he was still there. Right. He was still leading. He was still available for absolutely any kind of situation that life brings to you, you can count on it. If ladies are talking today themselves, they're saying, Arthelene, I'm trying, mm -hmm. and I've been trying. Mm -hmm. Help them just kind of get to the next step. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's, that's all you can do. He said, having done all to stand, you stand there. Now, you have to realize that we live in a society now where Everybody is so easily offended and they want, you know, and, and that's where we should not be conformed to the thinking of this world. Right. And, and our society has become, in so many ways, just obnoxious. <laughs> uh, and, and so everybody's suing everybody. You're getting mad at the people at school and all this. And the Bible says to be conformed to his thinking. His thinking is nothing like this world, nothing like this culture. Right. And I think about the words of Jesus, you know, he's just the greatest of all times. He was so honest with his followers. He said, in this world, you will have suffering. You will. <laughs> you will have suffering. Mm -hmm. But rejoice because I've overcome the world, mm -hmm. you know. Will you take a moment and pray for our guests who are watching today? Oh, I'd love today. to. Pray for them. I would love to. And uh, especially uh, you ladies, I'm sure there's a lot of ladies watching this program as well as gentlemen. I know a lot of men watch my program. Uh, I just want you to know you can depend on him. Mm -hmm. You can depend on him. It doesn't require an emotional feeling all the time. You can depend on him when your emotions are flat. So let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, you know exactly who's out there right now. And I pray that viewers have tuned in who had no intention at all of watching this program, but they'll stop them and to realize that no matter what comes in their life, trials, sicknesses, relationship problems, just keep holding on to your hand, Lord, that you will see them through no matter what, no matter what the situation says, no matter what their emotions are telling them, but just to stand on that solid rock, Christ Jesus, 
and it will come through. It, he will come through every single time. Sooner or later, he will come through. And I thank you, Father, that you've heard me today. And I thank you that you are going to work in the lives of the viewers. I praise you for it in Christ's name. Amen. 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 You know, I'm thinking of that old hymn. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. That's our prayer, that God will give you grace to keep trusting him. In closing, Psalm 37, verse 25, I have been young, now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. He is ever merciful, and he lends, and his seed is blessed. Arthelene, your seed is blessed. Yes. Your children have made it through cancer. Your son made it through a kidney transplant. They made it through loss of their father. Mm -hmm. They've made it through an embarrassment in their city. Your seed is blessed. You yeah. have children and grandchildren, and they're following Christ. He can be trusted. He, God, is so worthy of our trust. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for coming. If you want to get in touch with Arthelene again, just visit her website, www.rippy.org. It's easy, R-I-P-P-Y. -P -P She's available to come and speak and share. She'll share her testimony. I'll tell you, she came and shared one time for our amazing life for our teens. was powerful powerful. I remembered what you taught. It was a couple years ago. Watch the way you walk. Mm -hmm. She's a powerful, powerful minister. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.